it's Kellen. And today, you guys, this woman is a jack of many trades in Dale Edith, coming all the way from Canada, but she's really from Cameroon, so you know we're a little biased. We salute the Cameroon flag every day in the office and wait for the positive change that Cameroon ha will come with. But she is an author. She is a doctor, even though she doesn't want us to call her doctor at all. <laughs> but she is about building systems. She's a businesswoman. She's a consultant that you can hire. So as long as you can afford her. But how are you doing today? I'm doing very much well, um, Kevin. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I want to start off by you telling us about your foundation and give us, you know, the, the backstory of, you know, who you are and what your purpose is. Oh, yes. I have a foundation that I started last year. It's called Endale Edith Foundation. Um, the reason I chose the name is because um, it's very much attached to my story. Um, the foundation, it's focused on two major things. The first is to give support, provide support to fertility challenge individuals, particularly women, because where I come from, which is Cameroon, that, uh, that area is very much considered as a taboo. It's, a, it's some subject that people don't talk about, people are not comfortable talking about. And I can tell you firsthand that I have experienced infertility issues and I'm still experiencing those issues because I do not have kids yet. So I, I said to myself, it's it's a very great idea. It's a good platform to reach as many people as I can through this foundation to educate a lot of families, educate a lot of couples and women that it is not a death sentence and they could actually, you know, get a way out of it. I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I believe in praying. You can pray out and you have a miracle. You could also go to church. You could also go to the hospital to get checked. And it's not a death sentence, like I said earlier, because back home in Cameroon, when um, a couple doesn't have kids, it's, it's like you've killed the whole nation. You know, you get blamed, you're not treated properly, you're like an outcast, and people call you a witch. Sometimes they feel that it's because you were very promiscuous growing up. You must have tempered with your reproductive system in one way or the other. So I'm trying to break the stigma that is associated with infertility. That is the major reason, one of the major reasons of the foundation. The second part of it is um, for vulnerable children, protecting them particularly against child abuse. Now, when I talk about abuse, um, it's wide. I focus more on sexual abuse because it has a more stronger effect, negative effect on the individual, on the child. So sexual abuse, these things happen in Cameroon, but nobody talks about them. There's this culture of, of blaming the victim. Um, parents are not comfortable to tell the child, you know, what well, this just has to end the family. Nobody should know about this. And you find out that this child grows up really dysfunctional, can do anything in society, is hurt, traumatized. And mental health too is an issue. You know, in Cameroon, people don't really believe in mental health issues. Or if you tell them that you are having anxiety or you're depressed, you are seen as somebody that is weak. If you are in the church setting, they will say you are demonized or you're possessed with demons. So those are areas where I really want to work on. I'm bringing, bringing those areas back home to Cameroon so that they can see that it's something that we really need to spend time on. We have to talk about these things. If nobody talks about them, nothing's going to be done. So that's the whole idea about this foundation. There seems to be so much pressure on, especially African women, but I even know some men who, if they don't get married by a certain age, and I know, you know, culturally, Outside of America, there's so many cultures. If you don't get married, if you don't have this, do you, I mean, these old ways of you have to have this or you're a witch, what can, can we do, those of us who do have children? Because I notice that a lot of people that have children don't like their children. A lot of people in America, in the West, I say, seem to be burdened yeah. by their children. And I take my kids everywhere. They're like, uh, people say, wow. You bring them to business meetings and everything. I say, yeah, they're like, you know, my entourage if, you know, if it need be. But what can we do to stop this? Because to me, it, it's so, it's cruel. It's everyone doesn't yes, it have is. to have children. Mm -hmm. um, everyone doesn't have to be married if they don't want to be. I mean, you see people, you know, in quarantine beating up their spouse so what can we do to help support this initiative? 
Uh, that's a very good question, Kevin. Um, there are so many things that we can do. The first thing is to educate people. You know, when people have the wrong mindset, it, it downplays on us. People believe, like some of the things that you mentioned, you need to be married at a certain age. And when you get married, you go visit your in-laws. The first thing they do when you're at the door is to look at your tummy. Oh, is she pregnant? You know, it's, it has to do with ignorance. It has to do with culture. We need to have a culture shift. We need to make people understand that you mustn't get married at a certain time. You should get married when you're ready. And marriage is not meant for everybody. You don't have to be fulfilled a lot because you're married. And you don't also have to be fulfilled because you have a child. It's a personal thing. If you want to have a child, you go for it. If you're struggling to have a child, you should learn to, you know, while you're on the journey to, to have a child, you should learn to accept uh, certain situations and your life needs to go on. So the first thing that we need to do is to educate a lot of these people that, you know, it's not a death sentence. It's not something that you must have in life for you to be leveled as being successful. So a lot of awareness has to, has to go on. Seminars, conferences, I mean, that's what the foundation is all about. Going to various um, groups and talk about these things or topics that people shy away from. So education is one of them. You know, awareness programs here and there, it's very, very key. Because what you don't know, you will not be able to do. So if people understand that this is what is very key, it's having a good life, being happy with what you're doing, having value and being able to find your purpose, fulfill your purpose on earth, and every other thing is going to add up. So it's just basically education. No matter how long it takes, people have to keep speaking. We have to keep talking. We have to um, have our voices held out there. People have to talk. There are many platforms like your platform. It's giving me an opportunity to talk about it. So we need to get on so many platforms as we can to talk about these issues. I mean, people understand that your life could go on even when you're not married or if you don't have kids. Okay. And, and I'm just going to take a break real quick. Where's your microphone set up? Uh, it, it's, um, I see uh, you, you don't have a lapel mic on. Where, where well, I have. Can you hear me? Or you have any difficulties to hear me? I hear you just for, and it's not terrible, but I can hear like uh, the wind. And I'm just, just curious, because I was looking, I'm like, does she have a lapel mic, or is she hitting the microphone? I see your hand, so it doesn't look like, but if you're able to adjust it, the show must go on. And I'm going exactly. to edit this part, you know, out in a, in a flow. But um, I, I have something to that. Yeah, just adjust if you can, but I, I hear you. Um, now, in, in Cameroon, and without me saying names and putting people out there, is it better for you to have a child and not have a husband? And then they call you a shawu, you know? And <laughs> you don't, like sometimes things don't always connect. So is it to find any husband? Cause I think I found some men who find any woman that will do just so they won't be labeled an a shawu themselves. Even though men very rarely, are given that title, which folks, I'm um, basically, it's a a hoe or you know a hussy for those of you who don't like that that other language or a prostitute, really, um, you know. So yeah, answer that. I was about to go somewhere else, but I'm gonna be be very polite with with with, <laughs> with, with you here. So it, what is better, just to have the child to show that you're not a witch, or does everything have to come in that order? Well, to answer that question, I would, uh, as a Christian, I think I would go with what God has in store for me, um, personally. Um, if God says that you're going to marry at 40, you don't have to rush it. You, we all know the story of um, Abraham. He went ahead of God and then came out with Ishmael. So, so many people have Ishmael that are giving them a lot of headaches. So, it's, it's best not to go ahead of God. If he says that you're going to, you're going to get married at 40, so when you're 35, you don't have to do everything possible to get married because you might be marrying the wrong person. And um, I, I am a divorcee, so I can tell you what it means to marry wrong. It's a lot of headache. It's, um, it's not, it's not a, the, the right road to be on. So there is not that it's, it's, it's better than the other. The, the key, the bottom line is to be able to know who you are, know your values, know where you're headed in life, know what you want. And there is nothing in life that you can have peace for if you get them out of desperation. So be on your timeline, be on your, your calendar, um, do what you're supposed to do. And then with time, everything is going to fall into place. If it's, um, uh, as a Christian, it's advisable that you marry first and then after marriage, you can start having kids. But if you find out that um, the marriage is not coming, it's not 
happen and then you choose to have a child as long as you have the conviction that that's what you're supposed to do or you have the peace in doing that then you can go ahead with that but the, be the better option would be to wait on god have um uh, your husband or your your wife and then you can have your, your kids okay which is a message that you know i definitely push because it makes things easier but more and more exactly yeah, more and more I'm told that's the old way of doing things. And, you know, people have tubes and all type of devices that I'm really not hip to. I don't know everything. And, you know, they're saying you don't need that. And, and you know, if you want a baby, you can have a baby. Now, when you're making a foundation of this and, you know, making it, you need money to do that. And I'm trying to think of um, someone listening right now and saying, wow, I love this cause. I have a cause of my own. How do I fund my foundation? Is it all in grants by the government or private capital? How have you gone about funding this and pushing it? Okay, like I said earlier, um, the foundation was created last year. Mm -hmm. March 2019 to be precise. So from that time till now, it's been self-funded. So, you know, when you get involved into something, you, first of all, it's the passion that gets you there. And then when you are in need, you can now start learning other things. And then I got to realize that there are so many activities lined up that I have to, to carry out, but I have limited in terms of funding. So I do what I can do with what I have in terms of um, financial capability. And at the same time, I try as much as possible to discuss some of the projects that we have with friends and family. Um, right now, the foundation, though it's a year old, has a website. Um, we are still working on the website, particularly on the section that, uh, where, you, where you can actually get, um, do your donations. So because of that, we have to be in right standing with the law. The foundation was registered in Cameroon, but if I have to um, receive fund, uh, donations from people um, out of Cameroon, I need to make sure that I have a number that will be given to me by the government for the for the major reason of um, uh, main reason for uh, of tax returns. You know, because if the donations are made, it gets into a Canadian bank account. So we are working on that, and I'm sure that once everything is uh, up and running, we will give out all the information that is necessary. So, but for now, it's self-funded. Sometimes we do receive um, gifts from family members, friends, but mainly it's been self-funded. Okay, and and folks, this is this is important because if you go to her website, which I like your website, and you. you can even go to the Instagram, you know, you'll see posts of you know talking about child abuse and saying no to rape. Like, in my mind, I'm like, who would ever say yes? The fact that we live in a world, and it's always been like this before we were here, that you have to say no to a thing like rape is, is, is just asinine. And I say that because I've worked with abused children and even adults, and it's the reason why I take my kids everywhere. You know, I, you, you just, everyone can't watch them. And I think we need to put more money while everyone's, you know, protesting and rioting and self-quarantining, we have to remember somebody's quarantining on lockdown with somebody who's abusing them. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and that to me, I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest, you don't, have, don't say anything, but I don't want a trial for some people in these things. I almost mm -hmm. want to get the call myself and, I, and me and myself or two other people will come and we'll hold court right there. I have no tolerance for abuse uh, of, of, of any kind like it, it, it just it doesn't it just doesn't make sense and, and I've seen the the effects of it what can we do whether it's in Cameroon or the West law wise because you'll you'll be a lot nicer than me to me if you're accused and you're found out by two different people or three different people you need to dig your own ditch and your, your life is done there's no rehabilitation. That's me. And that might not be the Christian mm -hmm. approach because I know that everyone can be reformed and everyone can be forgiven. I'm just not there yet. So what <laughs> can we do law-wise to, you know, make stricter penalties? Um, you see, Kaden, it's a, it's a collective effort. It's something that everybody needs to get on board. It's not just somebody or some people 
in the particular area that have to speak out, that have to do the work. Everybody is concerned. You, there are people that have sisters, there are people that have wives, there are people, and even nowadays we do have men that are raped. So it's not just a female thing. So we, we, we all have to come on board and work. There's so much work that needs to, to be done. There's so much effort that needs to get into that. We need to talk to the parents how to protect their children. You know, I'm not blaming parents, but sometimes you could, you know, we see that a lot, even in the Western world, not just in Cameroon, you, you thrust your kids with somebody that you don't even know so well. And then you go, what do you think? You, you, you don't have, you don't have the, 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 the fright that something could happen. You don't have the fright that this man or this woman could molest your child. So we as parents, I call myself as a parent too, because I do have spiritual children and Way. So we need to make sure that we protect our kids um, from ped uh, predators or pedophiles. We need to also speak to these kids. We need to help them, teach them to open up. I'll give you an example, Kellen. In Cameroon, where I was born and I grew up and I spent um, most of the years of my life, if you are raped or you're violated sexually, you get to your parents or you get to your family. They always say it's your fault. You probably didn't wear the right attire or you provoked them. Now, these are the kind of things that we need to scrap out. These are the kind of things that we need to let those children know that we are standing there for them. Because if I already envisage that if I come to you, I'm just using another example, Kenan is my dad, and I go to Kenan and tell him, okay, this uncle over there has been making advances or he's touching me in some private areas. And my dad, who happens to be Kenan in this case, tells me, what did you go there to do? Do you think I will ever be comfortable to open up to my father? Of course not. So we need to create the right environment and atmosphere for these children to be able to open up to speak to their parents speak to their guidance so they have to play a part the schools also have to come in when you're teaching your children or teaching the students you need to be able to be, be vigilant to watch out so it's not a job that is just um limited to or should be done by foundations or be done by parents everybody has to play a part the school has to come in the school authorities also have to be on the lookout because some people some students are actually being swayed out of school and you know some of these things happen so everybody needs to get on board we need to teach the students we also need to start talking we also need to report those people the culprits sometimes we know them and we sit quiet because it hasn't come to our door okay this girl was raped over there it wasn't my daughter who was raped, so I'll just sit quiet. The most I can do is to just condone the family. That's not enough. We need to start identifying these corporates and then let the system or the justice system have its way. They have to be locked up. In Cameroon, there's no such a thing as a sex uh, 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 offenders register. We need to have those. The moment we put that in place, a lot of people will be, definitely will take, will take some of these things seriously. Because if I know that if I, if I rape a child, the police, the law enforcement is going to come after me. I'll be scared. But if I know that, okay, I get away with this, the family is just going to say, oh, let's pray about it. Or they will not even believe the victim. I'll carry on and rape as many children as I want or as many men or women that I want. So everybody needs to get involved. The government needs to get involved. The police needs to get involved. The parents, the school, everyone needs to say something. We need to speak. We need to, when we see cases or we suspect cases, we need to raise an alarm. That way, when everybody gets on board, we're sure that we'll be moving ahead. Hmm. I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm over here thinking there's no way in Cameroon. What would it take to get a registry? I mean, I, I, I you know, we, I don't, I didn't want to go so political because we know Cameroon hopefully will be in a shift of power soon. But what has stopped? the country from making a sex registry? Well, there are, there are many reasons. Um, first of all, it's always been seen as a taboo. People shouldn't know that um, there's a rape victim in my home. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going to be leveled, I'll be called names. It's uh, quite degrading. That's the kind of mindset I've been talking about. We need to work on that mindset. That's one. And two, the ministry that is involved in this, in, in, particularly the Ministry of Justice needs to come into play. For example, if I, I or I, get, um, uh, um, I identify somebody that has been molesting my, my child and I take it to the police. There shouldn't be any corruption whatsoever because we have situations in Cameroon where the people that are supposed to be behind bars are working 
working freely. So the, the, the whole system, I'm sorry to say this, it's my country, I love it so much, but the whole system is corrupt. So we have to start from there. If I am reporting the case of the police, the police needs to take it seriously. Once the police takes it seriously, okay, then we get to the, to the court. The court to the judge to take it seriously. So it's a whole system. It's not just one person. Because if I, if I happen to report a case and it gets to the police, and the police, the police takes it seriously, and it gets to the judge, and the judge gets paid, and the, court, the case is dismissed, nothing has happened. At the end of the day, the victim gets traumatized because she, he or she will be saying the, 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 the corporate or the perpetrator moving around freely and you and I can imagine the number of number of other cases that may come up after so everybody needs to get involved starting from the police there should be no corruption whatsoever that's the first that's the first stage keeping mm. out corruption but as long as there's corruption no matter what we do even as a foundation there's always going to be block blockages all over the place you know what I mean so it's very important yeah. Y yes, and it 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 it, it is is uh, that's frustrating because it, you know be, because it's not maybe happening to somebody who could make that happen, make that you know department put money towards that. Um, that that is that is definitely frustrating, but it's a problem that is a a global problem, and you know I've I've sat in psych wards where I've, I've been able to serve as the supervisor and to hear how, you know, like you were saying, even boys, and it doesn't matter boys or girls, adults or whatnot. Um, I just, again, no, no, I have no tolerance because there's too much, you know, sex is, is one of those things. There's too much out here and that you're mm -hmm. violating people. I, I would want a, um, the, uh, I can't even talk because I'd want to shoot first boys in Cameroon <laughs> to handle these situations. You know, the, uh, the gendarmes dressed in all black, just coming down, mm -hmm. kicking down the door and handling business. A a again, chopping off even an arm, mm -hmm. a bangala, it wouldn't even be enough mm -hmm. for me because yeah. they will still find a way, it's proven, to violate somebody if they're not taken out, period, point blank having it be a global initiative, many people, you know, in your situation would reach out to like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or big, you know, people who fund these type of initiatives. Have you reached out to any and, you know, if anybody, if they wanted to, you know, connect you with anything, like what do you need in your foundation? Well, in, in my foundation, um, I, need, I need a lot of things right now. Um, of course, money is one of them, but the initial thing is having the, the platform to um, work. When I mean platform is um, having the opportunity, I'll just use Cameroon as, as an example. If I, I have to go to Cameroon to do some work, I need to have support from the government, in other words, from leadership. Because even if I carry out the seminar and try to educate parents how to look after their children and I leave, there is not so much that's going to be done. At the end of the day, it's just going to be, uh, permit me to use the word, a waste of time. We are doing these things. We are, you know, organizing seminars so that they be changed. So I, we need to have um, support from leadership, support from the government, other organizations. Organizations need to join in. It doesn't have to only be um, the EES, the United ED Foundation. All organizations need to come together and speak. I believe that when voices come together, it's more amplified. So, so many organizations in Cameroon need to come together. And then we can start looking at support from your external support, be it um, um, support or having some of these foundation, external foundations organizing programs with us. But we need to start in Cameroon first. Because even if you have to meet some of these organizations, like you mentioned, um, Bill and Melinda Gates, they would ask you what you've done so far. And in most cases, they want to see that you've been in existence for like two or three years. But before you get there, you need to get some work done first. So if you want to get the work done in Cameroon, you cannot do it alone. Back home, we say that a hand cannot tie a bundle, which is true. So a Dalai Edith Foundation has the idea, but I cannot work alone. We need human resources. We need this people that, just like you, you 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 take this 
particular situation seriously. Not everybody does. I remember, I'm just going to give you a personal experience. I remember last year when I went back home to Cameroon to establish this foundation. And everybody was asking me, Were you, have you been raped before? I said, no, I have never been raped. But does, I, does, does this mean I have to be raped before I start something along those lines? Well, I have experienced um, something similar to rape. As a child, I was fondled. I don't have to, to have been raped for me to have this burden. So you see the kind of questions and mindset, it's what actually slows down a lot of things. And I told them, somebody, and some, some people come to me and they're telling me, look, Edith, this thing is not going to work. We are in Africa. You know the corruption level in this country. And I told them, I'm not the child that gives up um, easily, Kevin. And I said, well, we'll see. No matter how long this takes, we will get to the level where it's going to be something that everybody's going to get involved. I don't care how long this is going to take, a year, two, five years from now, but it's going to get to a point where everybody is going to be, you know, um, have the information that they need. Everybody's going to be on guard for their children, for their family members. There's always a certain point. It's difficult because you are bringing something that is pretty new, but we don't give up. All we need right now is it's, it's, it's support from the government and then also have team members that we can work with. I find it so insulting that you can go and try to do this work and somebody ask you, have, like that's any of their business. Um, if I was with you, we probably would have had a problem because <laughs> who, it's none of whoever's business, and I don't care who it is, you know, you can, you can, you can deport me. <laughs> um, but yeah. that is just an insulting question because whether you say yes or no does not make a difference. Um, and I know what I am going to do. And I, it, I know with sometimes we have to educate people by entertaining them. And I will definitely for, you know, the Cameroonian artists and our YouTubers that I know, you know, reach out. Um, there, there's some prominent ones and say, what can be done? And if you yourself ever come out with a song, you let me know and we'll go, you know, reach out to Dr. and King Stevens and say, take another shot because <laughs> this is something that needs to be on the, the, the forefront. And, and, you know, my, my issue with a lot of Cameroonians, especially the ones here, are that they're passive. It, it, they're passive. That's the problem. Yeah. Exactly. And, and and when you say something, especially me, I mean, you know, the, the, the DNA I can prove run through runs through my blood. I can tell you what tribes and this and that. But when people say, well, you don't know because you didn't live there, doesn't matter if I live there, doesn't matter anything. Right is right, wrong is wrong. That's the problem we're having right now with all these protests. People are not doing something before people get fed up. And so uh, I, I just find it, it, it's just shocking to me that, um, you know, people say, well, you, we, nobody wants to talk and nobody wants to be shamed. But the shame isn't on you, the victim. The shame is on the person who did mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And and so yeah, that's that, that that's crazy. Now you have talked through this whole interview on this next question I'm gonna ask you, but I ask all my guests, and you can even expound, or there may even be something different that you have in mind. But I want to know your community give back that you are doing or that you want to do in the future whether it be with your foundation or maybe you even have, you know, another business or foundation that is going to do some other good, but what's your community give back? Well, what I'm actually, I, I have um, a major project that I'm working on. Um, it's to build an institution, not necessarily a physical one, but have an institution where uh, we have people that, um, I mean, the institution is going to be involved into so many activities. One of the activities will be research, making sure that we identify um, people that have experienced abuse in one way or the other, or those that are struggling with infertility, bring them on to the center or let's say physical center, cancel them, assist them financially. Now, going back to, to infertility issues, there are so many people that want to try the other way, like artificial insemination or, you know, um, 
IVF, but they do not have the right funding amount to, to do that because it's quite expensive in some parts of the world. So we are coming up with a, a, a project where we'll be able to assist low income families to, to assist them with their bills, uh, medical bills, or you know, um, send them over for medical treatment. Uh, some of them may want IVF subsidized that as well so that they can have a family of their own. Now that's one of the things that we are looking into. Another part is counseling, you know, working with professionals that can counsel victims of sexual abuse because it's not enough to have gone through. Sometimes the, uh, you'll, be, you'll be shocked to know that Ken, and some people get raped and they just stay at home. They don't go to the hospital. So we, we, we're working on a, a system where we have the, the victim, victims go, go to the hospital to get checked and then have their treatment and also carry out counseling services so that we can integrate them back into society. That's one of them. And for us to do that, like I said earlier, we need to work uh, with the government, of course, but that's the project we are working on right now to have a whole center where we identify these individuals, we provide our support to them, be it um, in, in the form of finances, be it in the form of counseling, and you know, set up a business for some women that have given up in life, um, in the area, those are those who were raped and they've just lost confidence in themselves. We could actually um, enroll them in some short um, skills acquisition programs for two or three months where they could then trade and then pick up their lives um, from scratch and earn an income there. We are working on that. Okay. Well, I, I definitely, like I said, I'm I'm going to 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 reach out and I and I hope that you know um, we, we we again. Through entertainment, sometimes we have to educate, but it is, it is, I mean, th this is a movie, you know, this is a movie that needs to impact. And I say that because this is the world that I live in and I can see it. I can't watch the movie more than one time. Um, just mm -hmm. my, my head, even with dealing with abused children, I, I mean, I, you know, they try to make you watch these things of children getting abused to make you numb. And I think so many people, and this is for America and the West, are so numb to these, you know, acts where we really need to be proactive as much as we can. We know parents have to work. Um, we have so, you know, the other part that bothers me is when you say you're being blamed for not having children with your husband. Who's to say it's not your husband, you know, and that it's automatically the woman? And when this man mm -hmm. goes, who, who knows, he may be infertile. I know many of men in their 20s who have gotten vasectomies because maybe they had a child. They didn't stay. It was, you know, they are sharpshooters, whatnot. And they mm -hmm. had a child in their 20s, so they get snipped. And then they don't tell the woman at all. And they live their life like this. And it's like, you're a liar and very deceptive. But they say, hey, but I don't have any more children because all they're thinking about is child support. So I, I I thank you for bringing this on. I can't even take any more of this conversation because me, I just want to say point them out. Point them out and let's bring <laughs> this Western aggression that, you know, we have <laughs> to, to really, um, especially in Cameroon where I romanticize Cameroon sometimes because of my experiences. But um, I'm, I'm not naive because I've heard enough stories. So, yes, in, any time, anything, if you do put a short skit together, if you need any help and say, you know what, we do need. I've had Dr. and Kane Stevens on as well. I mentioned that. I've, I've booked, you know, the mm -hmm. Stanley Anos on different shows. Um, and I don't mind sending an email if there's something concrete that we can say, hey, can you do this? And if it's going to cost this, what is it going to cost? I think of like, we are the world mm -hmm. back in the day. You, I know you're too young to remember this, but Michael Jackson and all these people. Oh my God. Together, <laughs> you know, singing, we are the world and they raise money for AIDS, but we, we need to do something too for this abuse. And, and I know I'm not the person to spearhead it because my, 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 my reaction is very, I, I mean what I say on that. I don't, a court doesn't need to deal with this but once <laughs> and and that's all we have to do mm -hmm. so i thank you for coming on your the links people will be in the description box um excuse me for being flustered but this is a topic 
that um, I can't tell you how many uh, victims of abuse that I have seen that I've actually had to counsel um, on a very short, you know, on a very, you know, talking with the parents who might have been the abuser and the child. And I'm not mm -hmm. a counselor, but I am a counselor. And it frustrated me then. It got me in trouble at some times because I don't know how to t mm -hmm. hold my tongue always. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll leave it at that. So thank you for coming on. Peace and blessings. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me. And um, I do not take this opportunity for granted, Kevin. Dang.